Today we're at a station with a river in it. That's right. Mm. Opened in 1868 on the Metropolitan District Railway. Serving Chelsea and sometimes a flower show. Today we're at Sloan Square. In this week's episode. So we're down in the, the bowels of the building here. And a lot of doors with a bit of age to them. Oh, look at that, the tiles mm. carry on. But there's not much, oh, this should go action one there. Well, this is really weird, right? I can hear water. It's really loud. I can actually hear water mm. running through here. You're excited, that was? Yeah, I am. <laughs> so, after last week's episode on Earl's Court, Season 8, Episode 2, we're off to Sloan Square, where a river runs through it, to quote the film. It's all cool. I don't do this on my own. Thank you so much to my three chums from the London Transport Museum for guiding me through and giving me a bit of a laugh. First of all, Christopher Nix, looking um, angelic in white there, Nixie. Hello, well bless you for that. Uh, yeah, well we weren't angelic on the day. I think we were we were enjoying a bit of Sloan Ragering and uh, went and enjoyed a dirty great cinnamon bun afterwards, didn't we? Which was uh, exactly the right thing to do. Bought in bulk as well. Siddles, you're looking very summery today, City Holloway. Oh, thank you. Well, it's quite warm in this room actually. So um, I'm, I'm taking advantage now that autumn is here and temperatures are declining, that it's very warm <laughs> where I'm recording this. It's so good that uh, Laura Hilton Brown has got plenty of soft furnishings, including the moquette cushion. Hello, darling. I love this cushion. It's now an integral part of the, um, of the set dressing. I have to admit as well, though, that I do have to give it a massive brush before each time because um, my cats absolutely love sitting on it and I, I often find Murphy um, on this one asleep on my chair. Um, I went autumnal today, I looked outside and thought uh, there's lots of, after the rain, lots of lovely lush leaves and trees so I will try and match this but City's right it is quite warm and I'm a bit hot up here in the loft. The trick is that they've all changed and I've suddenly realised that I'm wearing exactly the same t-shirt from last week. I'm really sorry. Well, I'm not that sorry. Anyway, we're in Sloan Square and it is a station with lots and lots of secrets and quite a lot of excitement, as you'll see from our little presentation for you. Now, this is kind of cool because, of course, we've got the usual gates that we all know with a tap, tap, tap and all that. But then there's these. All you've got is two of these and two gates. So presumably this is like overflow, is it? Well, yes, it's designed for outward flow. As you can see, it's normally an exit only in emergency, but yeah. once a year, it's very important because this station gets massively crowded, doesn't it? Well, yep. John Lewis sale. <laughs> well, there is that. The Peter Jones sale. Peter <laughs> yeah. Jones. Well, it's because of the Chelsea Flower Show, of course. Yeah, and of course there's a clue to it just over there yeah. with that rather lovely uh, vitreous panel work with the plants on it. Now, I've actually never been to the Chelsea Flower Show. Have you? Yeah, it's I've never, always wanted to. Never it's got glorious. Got oh, to it. well. I'm always surprised because I think of it as happening later in the year than it does. Yeah, it's, it's in, in May. May. Yeah. <laughs> but, but so it's... I'm expecting it in June and there it is every year. Well, again. you know, it's been held in Chelsea since 1912. Yeah. And it's in the grounds of the Royal Hospital. And of course, the Royals do attend almost every year. It's so beautiful. It, it is, it's lovely, but that's why they built this capacity into the station. So when it's flooded by people attending the event, you can open this up and everyone can tap out. But it still must be mayhem. Yes, uh, it is. So I've been through the station when it's on, but not to there, and it is really, really intense. But of course, this station has to work quite hard anyway, doesn't it? Built, uh, well, opened in 1868 on Christmas Eve, bizarrely. A present to the area. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, December 24th. And, <laughs> uh, but it has to serve a huge area because there yes. isn't really another underground station that serves Chelsea. Well, this is a station the snobs didn't want, isn't it, really? It's just far out enough to go, it's not really ours, it's not really ours, but you can get into Chelsea if you go for a little walk. So you've got all the shops and all of that community yeah. uh, around it that it has to, has to serve. Well, and it's interesting because they built this in 1868 when this was a largely farmland and things like that. There, there wasn't a lot around here, but they were starting to build up shops and things to sell the surplus 
you know, produce here. So this was kind of a, I mean, really an outlier of London close to the river. Not really anything interesting there when it first opened. And now look at it. It's a funny old thing though, is it a station? Because, you know, when you think about the countryside, and that's exactly what it was like when this station was built, you always think to yourself, leaves, trees, that kind of thing, and babbling brooks. I mean, all this station really needs is a river or oh. a stream or Yes, which I'm sure we'll like get that. to. We'll also have a look at some of the clues as to what the station used to look like. But hmm. before it was in this form that we see now, it did get a lovely refurb in 1940. Is there Early anything left of this refurb? Well, there, there is, behind an anonymous door, in fact. There's the last remaining bit of it. So, Shall we? Um, Siddy, I think you've got the keys Jesus. today, haven't you? Just fish them out my pocket. Oh. She got it. Fine work. Lead oh, on. Oh, marvellous. Find the lights. <laughs> this is glamorous. And there we go. And look at oh. that beautiful uniforms. <laughs> a sick bit of uh, biscuit uh, tiles. See the tiny poster frames yeah. designed for those small, smaller panel-sized posters in that era. Similar to ones you can buy at the London Transport Museum shop. Absolutely <laughs> done. And ones that we'll see a, a bit more of in the uh, in the studio. There are some utterly fantastic posters in our collection, particularly around Chelsea Flower Show. Mm. Uh, and we'll a look at those in a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Robert we'll and James and uh, Dora Batty, some really good stuff. Um, she isn't last in summer wine. That's she? right, yes. Yeah, slightly different spelling. And then uh, just down here, look, we've got some green ones. I was going to say, because this is really interesting, you've got the green at the bottom, but you've got brown at the top. The yeah, brown's they, they blue. Blue line, what's that it? all about? Is it, <laughs> I would have thought Metropolitan might have been purple or district green, we've got that there, but what's the deal with brown? Is it just what well, they had left? Well, of course, you've got to remember, although it was finished in 1940, it's been designed during 1930s, yeah. isn't it? And so it's a whole a palette. That, that, that's, that's pretty. Palette, yeah. It is pretty, and now, I always love a good tile, Law. Um, you know, she'd love all this. So, one thing I've just noticed, which I haven't noticed before, is this looks like it was a door. It does. And like a panel there. Replaced with a vitreous panel. Now, if I remember rightly, is there something through the magic wooden door? We got the hmm. key. Yes. It's been a little while since we last year. Oh, look at that, the tiles so carry on. The tiles carry on, but there's... Oops, sorry, Siddy. Sorry, sorry. But there's not much... Oh, this should go. Action one there. Question answered. What is it? Is it just a, a oh, gap? Oh, it is just a vitreous panel, but again, the, the tile work continues. Yeah. Look What's that, that smell? Well, it wasn't me. Oh, sorry. No, I'm <laughs> joking. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a little bit of damp, isn't it? Yeah. It's obviously where Dave Allen used to practice. <laughs> yeah, there's no glass of scotch or yeah. uh, so ashtray. I guess this is just a store cupboard. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, should we carry on our discovery elsewhere? Yes. As it says, mind the step. Oh, I remember. So just out of interest, right? I'm just trying to work this one out. Would this have gone down to the to the platforms as an escalator shaft at some point? Because it's right. It, you know what I mean? I'm, I think I, they I, had a stair shaft. Did they? Because um, it's why would it be tiled? That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, and it it's, must have it's been obviously the, the route through wasn't mm. there because you've got tiles down there at the exactly. bottom. Exactly. So that, that door. Mm. Uh, Just yeah. fascinated as to why this would be like this, that's all. We will have to. Uh, there was, must have been a public passage yeah. there for it to be tiled. So yeah. we will. Well, uh, we need to go and have a look at some diagrams. Just to answer your question, Alex, if you look at where the original tile work was. Do you see mm. it's the clearly rounded a corner there it stops. and it carried on there. So is that the way And then down? there was stuff on the other side there. So I think that's an open, basically that's an opening, I presume, to the public stairs that used to go down, yeah. which are now outside back over there. It's, yeah. it's bonkers. <laughs> right, okay, bonkers. Right, then, right on, we okay, go. on we go then, let's do this. This station really, really foxes me because it is such a mad mix of stairs and escalators. And actually, yeah. this panel here proves how important escalators were, even to this very, very shallow station. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, we've got, obviously, these modern escalators today. Uh, but I love this panel. Yeah. You'll see 
heritage history panels all over the underground. This is a particularly big one with a particularly big shot, isn't it? So yeah, it is. Well, what I love about this is obviously, so the station got rebuilt with escalators in 1940. It really lasted about months before it got bombed during the Second World War. The reason it was is because it was so busy that it made sense to then add escalators into it. It was the first one of the subsurface to receive escalators. And really, I can't actually think of another station on the subsurface that has one. I mean, there really, really aren't many because you know it's normally not that big a, it's not uh, a, deep line, a big distance. Yeah. The only one which I could think that, that was originally subsurface, which had them, was because we did Alperton, which yeah. we didn't want. District line when it was built is now And how, and this is a bit of a random question, forgive me for chucking it at you. If you think about the length of these escalators, how do they compare to Chancery Lane, which has got such a short escalator? Uh, I so mean, you do, you do you get, get a short you do get some short escalators on the tube. But you tend to get short escalators uh, for things like that, where you've got stacked so you've got platforms stacked, on each so you, yeah. Like in Notting Hill Gate, you have one yeah, yeah, and then yeah. another. And that's because they were built like that. Um, of course, with, or they were modified like that. Yeah. Uh, this is unusual because it's a very early station um, and it got that refit because this refit was done in the 40s, as yeah. somebody said. So you've got this great, this shop is a yeah, really great bit. Beautiful. You've got the, the escalators added, but you've got things like the original lights, the canopy, yeah. that was of course lost in Second World War, yeah. more of that later. Uh, but it's a, it's a uniquely captured moment. I've got one question for you. It says up there, Uxbridge lines. Yep. Now there's no train from here that goes to Uxbridge anymore. Not at how the time. did we had? How did we have Uxbridge lines at well, the time? Well, as I just mentioned with Alperton, of course it was originally the district line when it was built. So there would have been three services you wouldn't have had to change onto what is now the Piccadilly line. But great spot, that. Really good question. Yeah. yeah it is. So there you and go. And another thing that I wanted to point out is here they've got two escalators going down. Whereas in the modern station, you've only got one coming up and people have to climb, you know, walk the stairs down. It is so strange, though. That mix of stairs and escalators here is... It's, it's a slightly sort of mind-blowing, because you you know you're going to get a lift up, but you've got to walk down. Yeah. You know, there's well, no, there's out no of the two, way which down. is harder. I know, upstairs, I know, walking down. but you know, I'm paying money for this journey. <laughs> I want to I ride, I don't want to walk. Yeah. I love some of these posters as well. Something about this to me almost looks like a fairground, you know, like this is a slide. And it's got like... Yeah, it makes it makes strange to see all of those adverts without a single one of them advertising Bovril, which you normally see. <laughs> um, Just whiskey. <laughs> now, the, the interesting thing I, I find, when you keep looking around, you're going to see little cheeky bits of identity. You see the hanging basket bracket with the round and bulls on it? Yeah. Uh, well, I think we last saw those when we were at Edgware Road, do you remember? Yeah. And took it all there. And even the 50s we've got there, where there would have been skylights, which have now been filled in there. That's right. Because they built the on top of the station, so they actually had to fill them in. It's fascinating. One of the things to notice as well about those posters, and this is a bit of a nod to what else was going on in this station, you've got whiskey, you've got stout, there was a pub in this station, wasn't there? There absolutely was. I and wonder we'll, if that's why there was we'll so go much booze. We'll have a look uh, at the place where it was. Uh, but I wonder, should we go and have a little look, uh, first of all, into the basement area? Is it time to be punished? Mm, it is. Should we go to the dungeon? Mm. Right, so we're down in the, the bowels of the building here. And a lot of doors with a bit of age to them. Yeah. And signs with a bit of age to them. There's some lovely doorknobs over there. Oh, yeah. Lovely old doorknobs. Lovely I'll just get a quick. Do you want to find a key for that door, Siddy? Well, I just. This one. Well, she plays, she, yeah, she's still. Well done, Siddy. Oh, she's done very well. Oh, wow. Now, just yeah. to kind of acquaint ourselves yeah. with where we are, this is we are over the railway tracks, aren't we? So yeah. this is but either under, side. Under, under the ticket hall. Under the ticket hall, over, over the tracks. And what Siddy's just seen is a little something which I came and had a look at about six months wow. ago. Wow. That's quite big. Are you thinking the equaliser? <laughs> it's a bit. <laughs> Not as much as you are, I think. Mm. Oh, well done. It's That's a bit isn't it? It's a big old area, isn't it? So what would this have been, once upon a time? Well, there's all sorts of stuff which are down. I, I do know one of the uses that the firm was put to. We'll show you that in a moment. But 
Uh, here, you can see it's been re <laughs> re repurposed for a, a lot of equipment, mm. basically, yeah. now. But it's been used for general storage, yeah. and you can see there's a coat hanger oh. set on the, on the wall over there. Lovely old desk here. What's this tr this trunk? It looks like a the kind of thing that you would store trackside tools in, and that sort of sort of thing. A tool Ooh. hold. Oh. Ooh. And it's got a monster. Can in you it. imagine if there was like oh, dead look. rats in there? Look. look now, no, that's got... a great find. You see, you've got some the the tiles. The tiles, which used to have those archway tre uh, the trellises on them. Yeah, yeah. before it got retiled that's in it. the teens, right? That, uh, well, it's 2008. It's actually, yeah, it's something? quite recently in the noughties, Yeah. Ooh, if I had some gloves, chaps, no, I would no, be... No, no, that's a bit icky in there, isn't it? Can't do that. I'm Ugh. not going to touch that, but if Ugh. I had Ugh. some gloves, I would. You isn't would. it remarkable where these things survive? And those ones clearly haven't been on the wall, because no. the backs of the tiles oh, haven't yeah. got any ground. They haven't got any glue so or anything. I presume any. that's how they've just survived randomly in Chuck them in there. Spares. Aren't they kind of similar to ones we have in the canteen? That's right, yeah. yeah. So we, we took some of those spare ones and put them in our canteen at the museum. So you can see here there's been a stud wall. Yeah. There's like a bit of stud walling. What were you looking at when you said stud? Uh, ju just the, uh, just the, the, wall. the timbers. The yeah. That's fair and enough. Then round here, this room was my favourite. You've got a favourite room down here, I love it. I do. You're fabulous. Oh, I to choose from. So you can see clearly there has once been a. Uh, Either a cleaner's kitchen down here, that's a little Belfast sink. Ooh, and then ceiling gets. Just round here, we've got another big area. And last time I was here, I was looking at this back wall because you see it's got bits of blue painted on it. Yeah. And there was clearly something here once upon a time. Yeah. It's have a model railway. Oh! <laughs> This is cute. So this you is where the, where the baseboard was. Be. Baseboard. Gosh. Backdrop. Bit of overpaint with the sky. Do you know what though? <laughs> it's a small railway layout because there's only one plug. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, guess you don't need loads. that. Much. You're not powering the district lines. And so all of this would have been. Yeah. So all the way along here, there would have been a, a layout. What? What is that? Well, I think that looks like it's green. That's an escarpment. Oh, yeah. Guessing there was a hillside in here that's about being picked out in plaster, <laughs> mud rock. This is bonkers. But you know, so many stations or so many parts of London Underground had model railways. Yeah. Well, Hoban, and I, didn't it? Yeah, Hoban, Hoban had one. Yeah. But I'm assuming the kind of it was encouraged. It was encouraged because it would teach staff more about operating the railway. Well, it's also because we're all quite fun. sad as well, isn't well, it, really? We love a train set. Yeah. and tea yeah. building, isn't it? So uh, it, spend all day working together and the evenings as well. Uh, what out. could be better? <laughs> Just, you know, run a big railway and then clock off and run a small rail Can railway. Can you imagine how much better it'd be for our waste lines if we had a model railway instead of going to the pub yeah. as a four? <laughs> maybe, That'd be great. Maybe you should have a head <laughs> Because <laughs> running a model railway is such a workout. <laughs> Pretty good as well, because look, there's a still here for uh, moonshine. <laughs> I assume that either that or the immersion's on. Well, you've made the link with the water. Yes. So I We're think it's it time up. for our next stop. So should we head off this way? Yeah. I love the idea there was a model railway down here. Do you know what I love about this? Wherever you go in the station, there are little vestiges of flowers and plants. Mm. I think it's really cute. Bit of fern. I don't know what those other leaves are, but I do like the look of it. Well, this is the equivalent, I suppose, of the, the ones over the other set of stairs on the other side. It's, yeah. You've just been to the show, and you're uh, on your way home. Are they enamel? Yeah. Yeah. I wonder how many people actually noticed these. I, do, I wonder, I really hope as a result of our shows, mm. when people actually look up a bit more. My phone is in my back pocket, okay, I'm not even looking at it. It's, well, um, we, are, we are hearing that, aren't we, with next queries and questions, yeah. people tell us. Oh, yeah. I spotted this today. I wouldn't have thought to look up until you'd pointed it out. And here on the platform, we find one of the great impediments to the building of the station. Do you know, I really, really like the fact that this place is unique because of a river runs through it, to quote the film. Well, there are rivers that run adjacent to and in around stations, but nowhere that it's actually been diverted 
in order to build it. And so what do we have here? We're assuming everybody knows. <laughs> in that culvert is the River Westford, which originates in North London and actually forms the Serpentine Lake in Hyde Park. Yeah. Also, what Knight's Bridge was named after because the bridge over the River Westbourne was called Knight's Bridge. This is so cool. So they, when they were building the station, this river came straight through and was one of the engineering challenges of how do you divert the river. Because the problem is, at this point, the river is actually down there in the ground, not up there. Mm -hmm. So you have to pump water up to get it up and over. Is that right. how you do it? Yeah. And it's right. funny because we didn't, you know, we didn't realise that until earlier this year. My thought was that it was only just below. It was kind of almost like a yeah. brook, yeah. and that it was just diverted into this culvert. But it's not. It's pumped up. And of course, in 1868, that then there had to be a pump house to do that. You couldn't just put a quick electric motor in and hope for the best. Yeah. It required proper pumping equipment. But to do what that. would the pumping equipment back then have been? Well, you've got two, two four, yeah, that's it. You've got two choices of power. You've okay. either got steam or hydraulics. In this case, it was a steam, uh, steam pump. So oh, really? Okay. Steam pumped. So why would you? So just if it's so far down, why would you have to bring it up to send it down again? Why could they not just let it do what it does? Because well, of corrosion. Oh, right, okay. It's harder if you put it underneath the track to maintain it. So they bring it up so you can keep an eye on it. Yeah. Otherwise, wow. you could have done, you're right, you could have done what's known as an inverted siphon. Yeah. Where, as long as Yeah, that's what I was thinking of, an inverted, <laughs> inverted siphon. siphon. Right. Yeah, that yeah, that was it, yeah. From my plumbing training days, that was. So, if the river is actually in there. It is. So what can we see? Well, there's a magic cupboard, or for our American fans, closet, uh, yeah, which been a while. holds the answer to that secret. Uh, it's quite small, mm -hmm. so I think we'll get you in with me and a camera, as soon as you've got the key, <laughs> and we can show you all the secrets. Yeah. Come on, darling, I'll lock you in the closet. Now, this is really weird, right? I can hear water. It's really loud. I can actually hear water through the door. Through here. <laughs> the clues are here. So it's not just about looking up, is it? It's about listening out when you're walking mm. around these stations. I mean, I, I wouldn't there. recommend walking around underground stations listening to doors. You will get reported. <laughs> <laughs> Look, do you want to pop in? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Ooh, and it, you know, you'll notice that it gets louder and quieter at different times. Okay. So make of that what you will. You excited, Apple? Yeah, I am really. <laughs> there are two identical keys here. It's pitch black. Find a light, and then we go. Do you know what? I reckon we will squeeze City in here too. <laughs> it's a river. This is incredible. So we are currently standing over the River Westbourne, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, that's right. Okay, I'll just stop recording that because I've done my touristy stuff. Look at that though, so it's coming in from down there and you can really see that that water is very fresh. It smells fresh, it smells actually. Fresh, yeah. There's a, as you were saying earlier, Nixie, in any other situation you would expect a concealed river to stink. But actually, this is, it's smelling fresh. It really is. And it also, does. if you look at the water itself to the side, it's very clear. It's clear. So if we think about the geography of this, I know where the river is going over the rails. Why is the water coming in from that side when I would have imagined the river to be coming in from the other side? Just just the, uh, the way that the pipes are being designed to flow the in. The bend of it. That's right, yeah. yeah. It might be just to take some of the, uh, the rush out of it by making it do a bend. I mean, you were saying that it smells quite fresh, and I, I was really surprised by that the first time I came in here, because this kind of thing, think about when we talked about Hoban and the Calverton River there, that is technically classed as a sewer, and you think of that being quite smelly, but it's really, oh, hey, big rush. Oh, that was a big one. So this is, this is just the natural flow of the river. It just comes in fits and starts. It ebbs and flows, that's exactly right. And what we've got here is essentially a big well, um, which gives some natural capacity to deal with that variation in flow and allow these pumps 
to deal with it in a more measured way. Because otherwise, the pumps would have to dynamically respond to it. And you can see we've got a number of pumps here so that if we can deal with failure and maintenance. And it just means that if you did suddenly get a massive surge of water coming in, these can handle it very easily. So one thing I'm just getting pretty blown away by Think of the volume of water that is coming through there. This is like this 24-7. It is always this heavy. And it's interesting as well because well, there's two things. First of all, that water has deepened in the time that we've been stood here because of that extra flow of water. But also, in terms of the geography of what's happening in the station, the water from there is being pumped up through these big fat pipes into the one that goes across the, the railway yeah. tracks and then down the other side. That is the way the whole system is working. Yeah. This is and a phenomenal amount of work, yeah. isn't it? It's diverted basically down to join the River Thames. And in there, in this little chamber, you can see one of the old pumps which has been taken out. And they're quite big. You can see it's got a big kind of crash filter down on the bottom just to stop it drawing in the big Britain, particles. Yeah. And that is a big uh, heavy duty uh, crash pump, as they call it, which can deal with quite large items going into it and still grind it up and throw it out. It's actually very similar to the ones that we have in the sun at Clapham South. So in there, is there a macerator as well then? Is it's there, the impeller and it's quite tough, yeah. so it will deal with small things and just kind of chew it up. And For anyone who's not out. sure what a macerator oh. is, by the way, it's those things at the back of a toilet sometimes that you hear it go grinding away. You know, don't you? Oh, no. you know, no, no. Is it similar to a ball valve? Is that a ball no. valve? The ball valve. It isn't, that's a new one for our crossword puzzle. <laughs> so the ball valve here is this unit, and it's a type of water shut-off valve. It just allows you to shut the water off gently so you don't get hydrostatic shock, that sort of hammer in pipes, when your cheap dishwasher or yeah. washing machine snaps the water off and yes. hammers the pipes. In that size of pipe, with a, a lot of water flow, the amount of hydrostatic shock you get can easily damage. You get it all here, don't you? You actually <laughs> get it all here. And of course, if you feel like being gaslighted, I presume, nice. that's your gas pipe for your lights <laughs> from years ago. <laughs> that's funny. Oh. Yeah, I, I think you're exactly right. Very nice. Right, okay. Shall we say goodbye? Oh, that's a nice hanging hook for your block and tackle. <laughs> <laughs> We've got it all for the cross here. Oh, here oh, right, shall we, uh, shall we head out? This, this is say. lovely. Yeah, I might just have a wee. <laughs> yeah, I can't think why. It's reminding me of a couple of coffees there. From the river to the platform, babe. Mm. So this is a, a fascinating vista actually yes, and yes. probably one that most of us miss actually when we're standing on this platform because not only can you see this beautiful ornate tunnel mouth yeah but you can also see all the little the is it revetments uh, that's right yeah. so the support uh, uh, wall supporting the yeah earth holding the, the, the earth back but so, even the cast iron brackets that used to hold the canopy over the station are still there you see them now you were saying in this that there was a canopy until World War II, so it was bombed to bits. That's was it? right. Unfortunately, but so um, it's that photo that we were looking at earlier up in the station ticket hall showed you that canopy, glazed canopy, surviving, and it must have looked really rather handsome. Oh yeah, wasn't it? I mean similar to um, Notting Hill Gate, for example, has that canopy, or parts of Bayswater. Gloucester Road's really got that enclosure, yeah. hasn't it? Yeah. It's and interesting. It, that Gloucester Road used to be the same. Yeah. Um, so it was a very common way of building, because if you're in a cutting, it's a really efficient way of creating a station. Yeah. And um, the tunnel mouth over there is original too. Yeah. But when the bomb struck the station, uh, it of course shattered all of that glass, destroyed the canopy. But Remarkably, the river. Yeah, it, didn't. it didn't hit the culvert. Is it some sort of miracle? Like, you know, yeah. they used to say the work, the work of God, didn't they? When things didn't go the, the way that... Of, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the bomb struck basically right into the ticket hall and over there. So on the western side of the platform. And unfortunately, there was a train just leaving the station. So it not only hit the ticket hall, 
into the, the platform where the train was leaving. Mm -hmm. So 34 people died and 79 it, others were injured. It was one the of the nastiest, it wasn't the nastiest, but it was one of the big uh, tragic losses of life through train stations getting, uh, getting yeah. bombed in the Second World War. Now, fortunately, uh, this issue had been considered, and although it's not, it's not a massive river up there, there'd be a, a huge amount of inconvenience caused by that water flooding the track bed and so on. Yeah. Uh, and really unusually for a subsurface railway, there was actually a floodgate fitted. Do you remember when we did South yes. Ken Kensington? And we, I went for that long walk down the, uh, down the side of the we station. We saw the thing, Patreon. didn't we? Uh, and we saw that thing, which initially we didn't know what it was, and we thought, is it a floodgate? It's like, why would there be one here? Answer, the River Westbourne just got the... That was why the they put it in? Yeah. yeah. Because if that was bombed, they didn't want the water flowing out all over That's the place. Right. Yeah. Fascinating. I mean, it would, like we were talking about, it's a lot of volume in, in that yeah. river. Yeah. And yeah. even though it's not as massive as the tents, it still would have been... Yeah, so I think we can take a look at some of those photos back in the studio. Um, but there's a few other things on the platform that are interesting and notable, aren't there? Let's have a look. Just down there. Now, boys, do you need any essentials or tobacco? Do you know, what the weird thing about this is that the one thing that I always love is a gin and tonic. Oh, but you don't say. The fun has been ruined on the tube because we're not allowed to consume booze. But once upon a time... Well, this is one of the last places that had a pub on the system yeah. until 1985? Late 1980s, okay. yeah, we weren't we're able to pin it down to a date, but definitely late 1980s. Called it, The Hole in the Wall. And this was a proper pub that served beer, spirits, wine, whatever. Probably fags as well, probably the, the tobacco. Did it? Cigarettes for American yeah. friends. So yes. yep. I love the idea that on a platform, while you're waiting for your train, you can have a crafty pint. And on yeah. you get to your train to go home. Well, and also in the 30s, there was a, a pub cat that lived there called Kim the Cat. Kim Cat. Mm. I love that. Just Kim imagine, K. I love the idea. You're working around the corner, crafty pint, the wife never knows that you've had a pint on the way home. It's great, isn't it? I love uh, that. Or you just, you know, couldn't, you're waiting for a train, it might be 10 minutes, why not grab a quick glass or something? Fabulous. Now, there's one last bit of the wartime history of this station I'd like to go and talk about before we leave. It's just down there. All right, let's do that then. Oh, dramatic photographs there. Dramatic. <laughs> That's a lot of braking action. Too right, too right. Trains a go go. So, well, we found where we are, baby. the perfect moment to come here because we've just got this gap in the trains where we can have a little look at this area under the ticket hall. Right. Now, a lot of concrete beams. Yeah. There are. And it's quite dark under here, isn't it? And there's the tunnel mouth over there. Now, Sidney mentioned that the bomb that landed in the Second World War when it struck, struck basically at that end of the ticket hall and destroyed this. Within six weeks, they cleared everything away, the wreckage of the train, all the injured and dead people, and they had constructed a temporary deck yeah. with a ticket hall in it, and they had the trains running again. Wow. Which is incredible. Remarkable. Six weeks. Yeah. yeah. And what they had to do at this end, the tunnel mouth had been destroyed. Now it's quite, quite dark, uh, but if I just give this as much beans as I've got, oh, yeah, you look. can see, can you see it's got yeah. a concrete face? Can you see where the destroyed brick is? Yeah. And then it's concrete But they've all the just way sort over. of filled it in. And that is what they built in that incredibly short period. So they made a lintel, basically, like a whole to hold the thing up. Arch. She's so sweet in that to show. I just want to make sure you're She's in so sweet. And we're going to be able to have a look at that once we've arrived at the driver. We'll be able to have a look at that back in the studio. <laughs> but that is a remarkable wartime survivor. Yeah. Uh, that was done in a rush, but still there supporting Genius. everything today. Genius. Quick and efficient. Back to the studio. Yeah. I can't get my head around the fact that there's a river running through that station. And it's still so sexy to me that we go into a cupboard and there is water running beneath you, which is a freshwater, lovely smelling river. And then it goes whoop, up over the top of the platforms. Siddles, I understand your excitement now. I know it, it's just bizarre, isn't it? And you know, the first time I walked in there on the secret of the London Underground show, I was just like blown away because of the freshness of it as well. That's what you were saying on the video, it's so fresh. And what's weird is that I was reading up about it and it keeps being referred to as the Ranelagh sewer. 
And I was like, that ain't a sewer. That does not smell like a sewer. It smells like a well in the countryside. That's maybe, we got, maybe we got it on a good day. Uh, I mean, I, let's face Why? it, after we I had mean, a couple, yeah. of, couple of coffees uh, beforehand with all that sound of running water, there was a real and present danger of it turning into a sewer. <laughs> Oh, they could have been. Yeah, if we'd all got a little too excited in that cupboard. I have to say, by the way, Nick, the white shirt really brings out your tan. I'm sorry to just say, not to just, just highlight that sartorial that's, moment. That's why I like to wear yeah. white when I've been away, just demonstrate that the tiny amount of sun I've had has had an effect. And of course, the thing is, Laura, I know you couldn't make it down to that episode recording, but actually there were so many lovely tiles on the walls there from various different generations. And then there was that labyrinth underneath full of... Well, I mean, some sort of municipal tiles, but some that actually look quite fancy. It's a real old mixed bag down there, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I, I always get major FOMO when I can't make it to one of the site visits. But after seeing that particular section, I was like, oh, that would have been really cool. Um, but secrets and excitement as you introduced it, was a good way of describing that. Although the sexy cupboards, I'm not so sure a cupboard's sexy. I'm not sure I'm with you on that one. Doing it all wrong, love. Uh, pictures. Let's go to Nix's picks. Okay, boom. Let's hit you with this one. Uh, thanks for pulling this one out of the collection, City. It's a beaut. It's from 1890. And what a different place it is. God, just imagine that the day that was taken or was when we had the first tube railway in London. Isn't that, can you imagine that is 1890, right? That, uh, and it looks so different. It almost looks like a little palace of railways, doesn't it? I know. And, and talk about um, other stations we've um, covered on the show. That is exactly like Marlborough Road and all those of the, the district line, uh, no, of the metropolitan. But by this point, the two companies have parted ways in disagreement, but very much similar type of um, architecture, isn't it? Yeah, and Laura, look, orbs on all the way up. of St Mary's Whitechapel with those uh, uh, and those globe lights we've seen before. Places like Gloucester Road, yeah, tremendous. And as I say, these these sort of trophies on top of plinths all the way along the roof floor. I do you know what I just I love 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 this shot. The best bit is the is the policeman at the bottom left who's looking like a little bored but quite stern and then the two little boys in front just look like they're going to do something or have done something very very mischievous um but yeah the the, the building here is just it's just gorgeous look at that hanging lamp and like you said the the, the intricate work along the the kind of roof as well and i love again that 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 use of curve and then straight line i'm um I'm becoming very fond of that mix, to be fair. I'm growing to really love this sort of architectural style because we had some last week as well, didn't we? What else have yeah. we got there? Well, um, a little bit later on, uh, Buildings Evolve. This is from Cross the Road. And you can see this is, uh, it's got something that we've seen before on stations where uh, the underground is visualising, uh, putting in those illuminated light boxes that say underground. And you can see it hand drawn on uh, above the entrance way. It's it's incredible because this was very popular at the time, wasn't it? And it was a vertical, like almost like a barber's pole saying um, underground, wasn't it? That's right. Blue and white. Uh, so blue background, white lettering and backlit uh, the light box to make it act as a beacon for the system, as Frank Pick would later say. What next? Uh, so. Uh, here we've got uh, some of the booking hall detail looking down into the shed and you can just see your first glimpse of the culvert you see just uh, ahead of the steps yeah you can see the top of the culvert there and then if we skip on to the next one we can see the culvert you guessed it being used for yet another advertising surface because uh, <laughs> why not have more advertising uh, laura just Talk me through what your thoughts are on that, because it, it it reminds me actually of a mainline station. As I look at it, it could be York. It's that big and cavernous. It just looks ridiculously large for a tube station, doesn't it? Yeah, it, there is a lovely sense of space. And I, I assume that the, the kind of light streaming through those alternate panels at the top is, is very much kind of responsible for that as well but I, I really love if you look on the right hand side uh, the metal work on the pillars you can just see ever so 
uh, kind of discreetly. Um, yeah, I think Oops, Nick's just got his. Oh, oh, he, he had his cursor over the right bit. It flicked. It flicks onto a different section. Uh, look there, that kind of um, is it floral um, kind of design in that those. Yes, look at that. The, that. The so you've got this, this huge picture with loads going on. And then when you look kind of uh, there's there's a lot of detail in it as well. Um, but lovely sense of space and makes me want to be there, which I guess is the whole point. I, I'd like to point out something else while we're zoomed in as well. <clears throat> Can you see just here? <clears throat> there's a destination on the district line, which is no oh. longer dest destination on the district line. And mm, before the um, Piccadilly line took it over. That's it. Yeah. <clears throat> I was actually just looking carefully to see whether it also had the Uxbridge branch on it as well. Um, but uh, not on that one. Do you think, I mean, I know this is a little bit oblique as a question, really, but you know, when we think about architecture now and we think about architecture then, I wonder if either generation ever sat and thought, I wonder what people in a hundred yeah. years designs i wonder you know because we look at this stuff and for me these sort of bendy iron work and all these lovely fancy clocks and lights and things to me they are like something out of a fairy tale if i look at architecture now it's so straight lined and actually quite stripped back and i can't imagine myself having this fondness for it if i was looking at it in a hundred years time do you know what i mean mm, yeah I, I think just that sense of arrival can you imagine coming down those steps yeah, uh, you have to. You know, some people might not have liked the heights. I can imagine because you you're coming down into quite an impressive, almost like a balcony in a you know grand house with a staircase, uh, confronted by the clock as soon as you go in there. Because of course, time is the most important thing for running a railway. Uh, so yeah, very different building to what we have it's, now. It's got a sense of Earl's Court from last week, though, doesn't it? With that clock yeah. and the arrival, you know, very. Very grand. Yeah, it's worth, yeah. worth a little zoom in, actually, uh, just to see. It doesn't have the writing on the bezel, but I was just wondering if it was, uh, sorry, on the face, uh, just wondering if it was indeed a self-winding clock from New York. And so just to confirm, that thing that's, that's going across the platform, is that a walkway or is it the river? Yeah, it's the walkway. Wow. So this the river's a bit further back? Yeah. That's right. The river's just behind you in this shot. So that's basically that that shot is looking uh, um, back towards the booking hall. Uh, but if you turn the camera around, that's the shot you get with the. Hold on a minute, uh, Chris. If you turn back around, <laughs> turn back around. Um, remember when we were stood on the platform? We were talking about how there seemed to have been like steps or something there. I mean, that to the side. Yes. There, gosh, that's exactly like what you'd have. At Again, Marlborough Road and, and those sites, isn't it? Yeah, you're exactly right. Yeah. Wow. That's good. That's gorgeous. Mm. Odd. Odd. So, um, slightly later view of the uh, the outside. Quite pretty. Um, always Again, I know, have some people. Fronts. My goodness, they love to stack their stock in the windows, didn't they? Uh, <laughs> Barzola. It sort of reminds you of when you go, you know, when you're on holiday or, or you go to like a fun fair and you're trying to win something, you know, by throwing throwing things at things or catching things out of ponds. That's kind of what it reminds me of. And what age and what age was that? So this is the 1920s. Yeah, this... look look at that chap's like wide leg trouser and his shoe. Just like, are they... He couldn't even be wearing spats, couldn't he? Uh, to I was just, be fair, do you know what? He could, he could. It, that big roundel above the station does slightly remind me of Arsenal. Does it? Oh. Yeah. Yes, I see yeah. what you mean. Yeah, absolutely right, yeah. Just a bit kind of a boom, it's right there. It's a bit, yeah, it's, it's, it's loud and it's proud, isn't it? And... Um, I will say it's quite unusual, I think, that, um, I don't know, it's such a small entrance. But of course, at the time, this area, Chelsea, was really changing and evolving from having been sort of, I mean, really an outpost to London and into the 20s. It's becoming more of a commercial shopping district, a lot of, you know, fancier people moving to this part of London. So I guess it kind of moved with the times. 
Well, hence no, it's a high class confectioner, not just a confectioner, as you can see oh, from the yeah. top. Yeah, high class. Uh, that, now this is 1930, and ah. a decade later, a a big change comes as the station gets a remodel, as we mentioned in the uh, in the film, and that oh wow is what it then looked like. Mm. Impressive, right? Really, yeah. Oh, look at that. That's the image we're looking at on the plot uh, in the. Um... In the, you know, when we were in the ticket hall, they've got that there as well. Yeah. And uh, it's just, yeah, extraordinary. And you can see to the side on this image, to see to the left-hand side that those alcoves for the steps have been filled in with bricks. Yeah. You, you must think I'm thick, but it looks like those escalators are a band, not a staircase. It's like <laughs> old. Just, just hoping... yeah, they, they do look like a travelator, don't they, rather than a... <laughs> so, um, I, absolutely. I, I, <laughs> what, what, no... I also, what I also like uh, is for our fan Laura who always points this out in the chat uh, Bovril makes a showing but this time inside, return to fitness via Bovril yeah. I haven't seen that one before yeah and you can get minors for 5D, 10D, 20D or 10D look <laughs> at that oh no is that 20 shillings and 10 pence or five shillings and tenpence. What is that actually? What does it say there? Going. Something minus. Five uh, D for ten. So five five, pen, five old pennies. Woo. For 10. You're risking my, what is minus? I, I mean, I'm presuming it's a uh, it's a brand of cigarette. Ah. Uh, um, smoking minus. <laughs> oh, we've got the rival over on this side. We've got Oxo. Yeah, Oxo. Fighting there. back on that side, and for for us. Port, Sandman Port. Oval to Boss Bros. That'll do. That's a great night out. <laughs> right. So that was 1940. Um, and unfortunately, uh, after the Underground had remodeled it earlier in that year, uh, the Luftwaffe remodeled it uh, later in that year. And that uh, is what that space then looked like. Pretty bad, right? Yeah. Oh, my uh, goodness. Wow. and But yeah. still, the river wasn't affected. I mean, that is just the madness of it. If you imagine what was going on around it, and the river was intact. Yeah, fortunate. Very fortunate. Gosh, yeah, you can imagine if that infrastructure had ruptured, it would have flooded the platform. It would have been an absolute nightmare, because as we said in the thing, yeah, in the video, um, you know, that, that there's a reason why they brought it over, is because they need to be able to maintain it, but Gosh, yeah. Incredible. Just the, the process of trying to clear all of that, and as we said, the speed with which they did it uh, and had a functional, albeit temporary, uh, deck and uh, booking hall there. You know, this is them partway through that process, but basically in about oh. six weeks, they've cleared it all and they're up and running with a train service going through it and a booking hall again. Incredible, really. Such well, a massive level of like destruction, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Well, and then it, it's just up the road from where chief engineers were based during the war at South Kensington. Uh, so uh, it was at least close to their uh, their head office to to be able to get there and uh, work out what to do. Um, so uh, the remodeled version in 1951, once it was fully rebuilt, and on the right hand side. You can see the exit for the Chelsea Flower Show, that special uh, bonus exit that it has. It's weird seeing it without a building on top, right? Yeah. Um, and when did um, when did Charles Holden retire from uh, London Underground? Do we know? Well, that's a good question. So uh, I think it was in the around this time. You've got to remember, even the so Charles Holden just oversaw a lot of the projects and kind of gave an aesthetic to it. But there were a lot of sub architects, especially Stanley Heaps, who did a lot of the work kind of almost, I would say, it was like, yeah, I, I God, I can't speak. I guess Charles Holden was like the editor. And then you had a lot of people kind of working towards his yeah. overall vision. So I love 
it, it was part. Holden and Associates as well. Yeah. So that's ex exactly right. He worked with oh, the, with right, the and and engineers of the and architects of the underground. It's just it's so lovely. And I just as soon as I saw it, I thought, hmm, Charles Holden. It's worth saying actually, the architect for this remodel was Walter A. Curtin. Walter Curtin. I, and uh, Walter A. Curtin. I mean, what what is Waltering, and how do you do it to a curtain? Uh, <laughs> but uh, yes, Walter A. Curtin. Yeah. Speaking of uh, of the Chelsea Flower Show uh, and other things in that area, time for some posters. Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, let's start with uh, one by Dora Batty, uh, which is. Um, Another uh, important feature nearby, which is the Chelsea Pensioners um, ho uh, Hospital around the corner. That's amazing, though, isn't it? I mean, it's just a it's a history book in one sheet of paper, Law. Mm. Do, do you know what's amazing as well is, I mean, artists of, of, of every uh, kind of kind just, um, I, you know, inspire me. But that, that she's, was it a she, sorry? Yeah, it's Dora Batty, yeah. Um, that she's managed to capture, um, I mean, I know it's only the back of the gentleman and obviously you can tell by some of his uh, aesthetics that, you know, he's of a mature um, age, but just by the, the way, like his posture, she's managed to capture that kind of, you know, that 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 kind of age just by the way that that, that kind of person stood. I find it incredible. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it explains why she was so good in Last of the Summer Wine. Um, <laughs> um, good work. Next. So here we go. Oh. Uh, this one's by Clara. This is from 1939. I um, loved this one. Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. This is very you, Sidney. I don't know why, but I knew Yeah. That. It's well, you know me, I really love like bold colors, like red mm. and like dark greens and dark, deep blues. That's like my favorite. And I saw this one when I was picking through photos yesterday, and I was like, oh, like I would totally have that in my house. It's, it's just it's, lovely and fun and joyous. Look at the butterfly and the little ladybird as well. But so the cute. butterfly on the roundel, I just, just yeah, what a touch. The, the, um, <laughs> It's just differently now, aren't we, as a result of our little tutoring every week from Laura. I, I look out for detail now on posters. The, the other thing that. about I this... Think in another series, you were, you were dead against, you were like, no, I like my maps and I like my photographs, so I like that. What I really like about this is with the lithographic printing, that as a poster really pops. The, you know, the, the reds in there, which as we know, only really used very much on the underground because they fade easily in the light. And those, uh, what are they, pansies with the that sort of yes. intense blue and the purple, which mm. really, really pops. Um, when you see the poster in in the flesh, it's it's a really really vibrant. Uh, and the daffodils and poppies, which are very kind of synonymous with that that kind of time of year, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Got another one. Yep. Oh, I like this too. See, this I, I feel like is more like you, Lord. <laughs> Isn't that funny though that that you've got the same information and sit similar? She hasn't got as much yellow, or this one doesn't have as much yellow. And essentially, it's just an, another poster with flowers on. But how different it is to the other one? The style and the choice of flower makes it very, very different to interpret. I, I think it's fascinating. Were there, was this one older than the other one? Uh, this is 1938, so it's only a year, year younger. Uh, sorry, a year older than the, the one that we saw before. The other one younger than this. And and I think of the two, I'd be more likely to go to the Chelsea Flower Show with the other one as the poster rather than this. I don't know why. Maybe it's just a slightly subdued colours. I don't know. But I, I love that last poster. So glorious and playful. Nice, nice little touches on there, which you don't see very often. I was just looking to see if I had something easily to hand in my maps and so on that would uh, show it. But that outline bullseye roundel is is quite unusual. It's ver that's very much of that era. Hmm. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, you're right. I, I agree with you, Alex. For some reason, the other one pops to me. It's more playful. You've got a ladybird and you, that lady, you've got a ladybug and you've got butterflies. This one feels more like a, feels more static. 
Yeah, it does. Just subdued. Next. Well, um, you know how you uh, like to end up in the pub? Yeah. Alex? Uh, well, there it is. So oh, I'll find the photo uh, for you. Um, just on the right hand side. Isn't that amazing? Laura, can you imagine our journey's home? You'd have to be willing for a delay, wouldn't you? <laughs> just a quick one wouldn't be a quick one, no, would it? Nine minutes, no problem. Let's yeah. down. Look at it, the buffet bar, the Truman yeah. bar. It looks like that lady has gold shoes on as well. Good shoe choice. I like it. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Doesn't she? She's just left Truman's. One yeah. only steaming. Sniff of the barmaid's apron, she's anybody's. Yeah, the whole deal. We, we know all the gags. Um, wow, amazing. To think that there was a pub on the platform, that's so cool. I would have gone there just to say hello to the cat, you know. <laughs> of, course, of course you would. I've been there for the drink, but that's how me and Nixie are just very slightly different at times. Uh, that was really, really wonderful. Thank you so much. I've got one piece of notes, queries and questions, and I love this. This is from Kelvin Hall. And he says, uh, hi, guys, I'm a fan from Perth in Western Australia. It still blows my mind how we're around the world. I became a fan of the tube in general after my wife and I spent three weeks on holidays in July 2022. I loved using the tube to get around London. After that trip, I began searching YouTube for information about the underground and its history. As a result, I found your channel and others, and I always look forward to new videos from both channels. There you go. Thank you so, so much for being part of our world. Um, as always, find us on Patreon as well if you like this and you want a bit more. Um, then find us on Patreon. All the details are on the London Transport Museum's website. But um, from all of us at uh, Sloan Square, thank you very much indeed, Nick. See, for great pics and a great place. A fab place to go visit, right? So much history in a station that's only served by one line, but very interesting place to go and explore. Thank you, Sidney, for showing me your water feature. Well, technically two lines, no, Christopher? The circle and the district line. I, I Okay, I take that point. I <laughs> but it's a, I, you know what? I thought we'd discovered everything about Sloan Square and yet we found some more. Lovely stuff. Uh, Laura, I wish you could have smelt my water, but you couldn't. Um, it doesn't matter because you were here in spirit. I mean, it's, that sounds like um something i'm not gonna have fomo about to be fair <laughs> but it, it looks like a really good site visit i'm sorry i was poorly and i couldn't make it um i've just shifted slightly so i could plug my ipad in because i was running out of juice um hence why i just brought cushion over with me quickly as well um i can see alex doing something with his round or two you know i've had to take it off because it keeps falling over if you want one of these you can get it from the shop or online from the London Transport Museum website. As always, thank you very much indeed. Find us on Instagram at Alex Grundon, Chris Nick, City Holloway, Hidden London Law, and at LT Museum. Thank you for finding us on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment down below. And we'll go somewhere really, really cool very, very soon indeed. Have yourself a great day and stay safe. <laughs>